So today I wanted to do something a little bit different, more towards the uh, beginning players. But uh, first off, um, it's just been a long week. Uh, this last, or I think it was like last week, Sunday, um, we actually had the giveaway. Uh, and it's been a little bit while, but I remembered I needed to announce it on YouTube, but I had a bunch of midterms. I had one last week and then one this week, and I got another one next week. So instead of waiting, I'm just going to do the announcement here. There was two winners for the gift cards. Uh, the account, I never managed to get something good. But, of course, I do have uh, Mara on my account. So if you, like, just started the game and don't really have any good monsters, I would suggest uh, emailing me about the account. I'll just give it to you for free. The first, uh, first come, first serve. Uh, Mara is the Dark Amazon. She's actually really good. A lot of um, high-level players. I know myself... Uh, we really want that kind of summon from a light and dark uh, scroll if we uh, if we do get a three star because um, it's probably one of the best three star dark monsters uh, in if not the best. Uh, so if you do need a good account to start off with and you're just struggling with monsters, uh, email me and I'll just hand you the account over. Not a big deal. And then for the two gift card giveaways, the in-game names were Joker B and THHGGB. So if you guys want it, I will give you a week from, uh, we'll do a week from this Friday. So tomorrow, um, you know, just go ahead and email me, right? No, message me on uh, YouTube with the account that you left the comment on, and I will check. So if you don't do that, I'm just going to ignore it and delete, you know, the, um, the message you sent me through YouTube. Uh, so make sure you sign in on the account that you used to comment with and send me a message saying, yo, this is me. I won the giveaway and then I will send you the, I or you need to also tell me, uh, iTunes or Google play, and then I'll go ahead and, um, get the cards and I'll, I'll send you the code for it. And it, it will work, uh, 20 or $25, whichever one I can get my hands on. Cause I don't know, I I'm familiar with iTunes, but I'm not really as familiar with Google Play cards, so we'll see uh, which one they sell, and uh, I'll try to make it um, the better one, but if they only sell $20 ones, I can only get the $20 one, so I hope you guys understand that, but, um, and also don't forget to thank Tanker04, or 04, uh, yeah, Tanker04, uh, he's actually, he donated one of the gift cards uh, to me for the giveaway, so definitely give him a thank you when you get to 5001, if you guys uh, go to 5001. Um, big shout out to him, super helpful, and uh, definitely gives good advice, uh, good player too. So, Now, today I wanted to talk a little bit about runes, so this is going to be a, basically a quick rundown on runes, and uh, basically uh, a straightforward guide on how to choose which runes you want to use. So if we go ahead and look, the first thing you want to be looking at is the type of monster that it is. So if you look at like this, Varad, my dragon, he is a defense monster. So the first thing you'll realize is that, okay, he's a defense monster. He's not going to have much attack power. So you're probably not going to want to throw attack percent runes on him. There are some different cases where this is, um, this is definitely not right. And I'll definitely show you one of those instances. So it's just more general when you look at that. If you look at Jojo, he's a defense monster, okay? But you want straight attack percent, all, all 246. And I'll explain that a little bit. But first thing you look at is, okay, what kind of monster is he? Defense, um, support, HP, and, and then there is attack. Uh, those, or, those are the basic ones. So if you look here, so there's defense, there's HP, there's attack, uh, there's, there's another defense, where's the support? There's the support, and then there's one more. Actually, I think that's it. So, defense, HP, attack, and then support. Alright, so those are your different types of monsters. Basically, your support monsters are going to be more oriented towards um, heal factors or buffs or, you know, stuff like that. So if you look at Ifrit, he's got his uh, little passive where it removes harmful effects. Really helpful. Supports the team, just like that. Uh, now, HP monsters, so if you look at Amin or Arnold, that, that basically means, the majority of them, they're going to have skills based on their HP. So if you look at Amin, uh, heals based on his max HP. Arnold, attack is based on his max HP, the damage. Um, 
So now if you look at uh, now if you look at like attack based monsters, now this just means that their skills are going to be a little bit harder hitting. They've got a higher base attack, and their skills their skill set is going to generally be towards um, doing damage. All right, so this isn't always the uh, the time. Um, this isn't always how it works. Sometimes these monsters will have passives. So like Vert Hill, uh, he is an attack monster, but I would definitely uh, probably consider himself more towards uh, support, just because I don't use him for damage at all. If you look at his passive, he increases the, atta uh, the attack bars of allies for every critical hit. So that's basically um, like um, imagine Bernard without that little speed buff every time he goes. Um, and it is phenomenal. So I would definitely consider him more uh, more support type. And the reason for these little um, descriptions, like attack or HP, that basically shows their kind of stats. All right, so so Verta Hill has higher stats in attack than you'd say, you know, in a defense type monster. So if we can compare two of my six stars, you see uh, Verad has... Uh, way more defense than, let's say, Katarina, who's another Nat 5 star, uh, that is an attack monster. So you see that yeah, difference in attack power and defense, that is the difference between those two. But of course, you have to remember that natural 5 stars also have in, like way more stats, than uh, or higher stats than other monsters. So if you look at uh, Arnold and Varad, they have nearly identical HP, but of course, Arnold is an HP monster. That's the difference between natural 5 stars. That's why natural five stars are uh, super, super awesome. They've got really um, a lot higher stats. All right, that's that's what also makes them really nice. Uh, not to mention a lot of the skill sets are very helpful. Um, so, so like this is one of the very good uh, examples. Julian is an attack monster. If you look at his attack, it's just it's way up there. Um, he has, I think, he has the most attack out of all of the natural four-star monsters, and I think the highest base attack for the five-star monsters belongs to the Wind Phoenix. So we'll go ahead and look through here. Um, it might be the... Yeah, I, I definitely think it's the Wind Phoenix. So if you look here, seven, uh, we'll look at the Awakened Max level six-star version. 1,098, right? I, now, I heard the dark one has pretty high. I don't know. I could be wrong. We'll just check. Double check. Okay, so it's pretty close there. So I think the Wind Phoenix has the highest damage, uh, base damage, out of all of the natural five-star monsters. So definitely, you look at these uh, two. They're attack-based. They've got a lot higher um, attack, you know. And okay, just uh, hold, hold with me or, like, stay with me for um, a little bit because this is basically how you determine the rune sets. Um, so you, you need to, you need to look at where their stats are and and of course you see you see the uh, HP is very low so he's very very squishy so you need to you know be careful with that. Uh, Lagmarone attack you see his uh, base attack is a lot higher as well than let's say you know well you can't really compare so when you're comparing these uh, monsters you gotta be careful that you don't compare the natural five stars to like natural four star or three star monsters because if you do you'll notice that like look Lagmarone has a higher base HP. And uh, almost getting close to the same defense. Um, that's just because of the difference in level that they really are. But um, okay, so the whole point of this is, what kind of monster are they? Uh, what, what, uh, and then the next step after that is, what are you going to be using them for? So Lagmaron, uh, Julian, you know, different these kinds of monsters with high damage. You, re you know, once you determine that, you're like, okay, well, I'm definitely going to be throwing some attack runes on them if if I'm going to be using him as a damager. So if you look at Lagmaron and you look at his uh, skills, he's got one AOE skill, um, a second skill that bases off of his attack speed, and then uh, just a simple first skill for the Chimeras. So you look, he doesn't have any, like, he has a 50% chance to stun. So it's not 100%. So you gotta, that's also another thing you got to be careful about because um, uh, these, like, percent chances on, like, CC-based monsters or crowd control-based monsters, like stun and freeze and stuff like that, um, they're not as, re they're not really that reliable, so, um, you gotta really be careful. So he only has one AoE skill, and it's not even a 100% chance to stun. So you're definitely not gonna want to use him as a CC monster, especially with that, you know, high amount of attack base. So I threw on, um, attack, so I know I'm gonna be using some kind of attack set. Now we look at his second skill, and you see, okay, well, it's, it scales off of his attack speed. 
So, um, and it increases his attack speed uh, with a crit critical hit. So you can see right there, um, and, and if you look at it, one uh, one more cooldown time, one more Devilmon used on him, and it's going to be basically, he's just keep renewing his, uh, his um, buff of attack speed. And these really insanely fast Chimeras can be pretty scary sometimes. So if we look at his rune set, I'm not running the uh, recommended, I would say. I would definitely say, okay, so one, he's got an AoE skill, which is not bad at all. Um, and his second skill bases off his attack speed and it increases his attack speed. So you're definitely going to want to be throwing on Swift runes or uh, slot 2 with a speed on it. If you throw on Swift runes, slot 2 should automatically be uh, speed. You know, if you're going to be increasing his speed with uh, Swift runes, you better at least get as much as you can up there. So sl slot two is going to be speed, um, and then his swift runes will. You want to push it up as much as you can, and then depending on whether you want him to be, you know, really really hard hitting, um, or you want him to be a little bit more tanky, that depends. Uh, but I find the best uh, setup, if you really want to get max damage, is not to throw attack percent on two four six, but to instead go attack percent, crit damage, and then attack percent. Um, just because it it definitely does more. And right now I'm just throwing on, I, I threw on some good Violent Runes that I have, um, just because he farms for me. I don't really use him as much uh, anymore towards Arena. Uh, well, right now he's on my defense just to scare people away, but um, I really don't plan on using him in Arena. So he just farms for me, and he does a uh, job well until at least I get my Monkey King up, because he, he's a decent uh, fame on Hell farmer so i'll go through and show you the runes so that was just an example so if we look here these are all the different um runes right here the and now it can get confusing for you beginning players so if we look the first one from left to right in the first row we've got energy runes now energy runes basically they give you um they're two set all right so you got to look down there in the bottom left hand corner, uh, two set and four set. Those are only the two types of runes. Two set means like these focus runes. If, if you put two runes on there, it's going to give you that little bonus down in the bottom left, the, that like accuracy plus 20% or HP plus 15%. It's going to give you that bonus. Now, if you have a four set like despair, you have to have four. All right. And you shouldn't go more or less than that. Okay. Unless you're doing broken sets, which is a whole other story. Just ignore that for now. Okay. So, you got like your despair, which is a four set, and then you've got your energy, which which is a two set. So generally, a lot of uh, setups are going to be a four set and then a two set to fill up all six slots. All right, so you've got uh, your general runes, your little rune circle with uh, six different uh, runes, and you see I've got four despair for that uh, four uh, four set, and then I've got two focus. So basically, we look at the bonuses. I get a twenty five percent stun rate. All right. So that means every attack from mine has a set stun rate, all right? So that's a 25% chance. It's fixed. You can't resist it, none of that stuff. And uh, it's not scaled on accuracy either uh, because it can't be resisted. So it's just a set 25% chance. So Despair Runes are pretty awesome with uh, AoE monsters. Now, if we look at accuracy, we look at the bottom left. It's green plus 20% accuracy and 20%. Uh, now, accuracy basically just uh, means that you have a higher chance of landing your uh, debuffs on the enemy, whether it be stuns or like attack break or defense break. You have a higher percent chance of landing those instead of the enemy resisting them, okay? Because en enemies can resist and like stop harmful effects from happening. There's a complicated algorithm to it, and it's a whole other story, so it can get complicated. So for you new players, just don't worry about it for now. Just remember that Higher accuracy means better chance to land your uh, debuffs, like your skills that ha uh, hurt the enemy. Whereas resistance makes your team more likely to resist these harmful effects from the enemy. Okay, so we see that now there's a four set and there's a two set. So when you look at runes, you really got to be careful on what you're putting on. You, you don't want to put like two despair runes and then just a bunch of other ones because then those despair runes are just wasted because there's not four set, you know? So now we look at the Despair set, and Despair is a uh, stun, all right? So you've got your HP plus 15%. Now you've got your stun plus 25%. Now we look over here, and you've got Focus runes like we just went through. 20% accuracy. Good, good. Now you've got your Swift runes. Now Swift runes basically 
Um, the way they work is it adds a 25% speed bonus. All right, so this is not... Now, a lot of these skills, these are, are actually all of these skills, when they mean um, a 25% chance or 15% or like 25% uh, boost like to speed or like 15% to HP, stuff like that, it doesn't mean your total. So if you look at my Varad, he's got like what? 27,000 HP. It doesn't mean 15% of that 27,000 is going to be boosted onto that. It means his base HP. So 11,535 it's going to take all of that stuff with the initial runes that I put on him with these like HP runes and stuff like that. And then if I have, say I had energy runes instead of these focus runes, it would take 15% of this 11,500 and then it would add that back onto my total uh, in the green. And then that um, total where you add up the 11,000 plus the green, that is your total HP. So anything in here, um, so like speed, his base, uh, his base speed is what it's based on. So, a percentage, uh, a percentage of the 93 is what gets added. Um, if I had swift runes, uh, that's basically what's going on there. Now, violet runes are also very hard to get. Now, these are I'll, I'll start getting into some of the harder runes that you got to get. And now, these are more late game. So, every turn that you go, there's a 20% chance. It's getting changed, so it's going to be 22%, and then it's going to decrease every time after. There's a set chance uh, that you'll go again. So you'll get a second turn, and then there's another chance that you'll go a third time, and then another chance that you get a fourth time. And right now, it's just 20% chance each time. So you go, then there's a 20% chance you go again, and then 20% chance you go again. And right now, Violet Runes are extremely like overpowered. It's insane. They're super helpful if you've got them. Super annoying if you're going against them, because I've seen uh, monsters go like five, six, seven times in a row. Um, if you get unlucky, and I don't know, it's just me, but when monsters are on auto, like, you know, like you just press the auto and you're not controlling it, and you just let them do their little AI thing, uh, they get this extra turn activated so many times. So when you're on arena offense, I, f I don't get any, like, extra turns, like I feel like, and the enemy gets so many because it's automated and they're using their AI. That's just, I don't know if it really works that way, but it definitely feels like that. Now, Violet Runes are super, super helpful. So we look at Violet Runes, they're a four set. So we'll look at one of my Violet Monsters like uh, uh, like Lagmarone. So he's got um, Violet Runes on him. And so you see he's got that 20% extra turn chance and then 15% HP. So right now he's a little bit more tanky. Well, not really that tanky. I mean, he's got like 18,300 18, more or less. Um, so he definitely uses his skill, uh, or he gets another turn every now and then, which is why I like him as a farmer, but I'm definitely going to make him faster because he's a speed based monster. And you look at that base speed, it's a lot higher than like, let's say, you know, you see Armin and Veramos and all of these, they're a lot lower than uh, his. So that's a deciding factor as well on uh, what runes you want to put on him. So we'll look through here again. Now, after Violent, you got Will Runes. Now, basically, what immunity is, is you see those debuffs, how I was talking about resistance and accuracy and stuff like that. Immunity basically means it's those little wings above your character. It means you cannot receive any harmful effects. So, like, attack break, defense break, you know, those little, like, red things that appear up, up above your uh, monsters. You can't receive any of those while you have that above your head. And basically this means at the start of every single loading screen, um, so like say you've got like different uh, stages, at the beginning of every single stage, that little, like you're going to, for one turn, you're going to get those little uh, immunity wings to pop up underneath the monster that has this. And it's a two set. All right. So these are pretty helpful. All right. Now these are more for um, monsters that cast immunity. Uh, I wouldn't suggest putting these on like every single one of your monsters because there's definitely better runes that you can throw on your monsters, at least for two sets. But these are good for like, say like Chloe, who's super fast and you want her skill to activate her, um, uh, I think, yeah, Fanatic, where it puts the invincibility for one turn and immunity for two. You don't want her to get stunned because if she gets outspeeded, like because she has a ton of speed uh, most of the time, if, she, if someone outspeeds your Chloe and throws on like Freeze, like a Tyrone or something, and she gets frozen, then your team is going to lose an entire turn without the uh, invincibility. So if you throw these on her, um, 
then she will, as long as she goes sometime before, like, damagers, like Lucian or something like that, then she can throw on her skill, throw on immunity uh, against, like, CC monsters with the freeze and all that stuff. So these are definitely good for monsters that need that little immunity um, just in case you're going up. Now, I would say these are more for arena. Just in my personal experience, will runes are more for arena. So, like, stuff like Veladjul, Chloe, uh, maybe even Delphoi. Uh, probably mostly Chloe and Veladjul, I would say. But once you're going into, like, dungeons and stuff like that, I would not suggest using the will runes because the very beginning, um, especially against bosses, you definitely don't need the immunity because the boss is not going to go right away. The towers don't go right away. And your base speed alone is going to allow your monsters to at least go once before the uh, boss does. So you don't need to worry about, you know, your monster getting frozen or, or you know, stunned or anything like that uh, before your Chloe or Delphoi or something goes. So definitely, I would say Will Runes are more for Arena when you've got speed teams. And yeah, so Guard Runes are now the defense, uh, plus 15%. Now these ones are more for defense-based monsters. Defense is more for player versus everyone, or environment, or whatever, so, like, PvE, so, uh, like, dungeons, scenario mode, trial of, uh, <clears throat> trial of ascension, stuff like that. Now, arena, I would not suggest using, uh, defense, because you've got monsters that can ignore defense, or you've got defense break, like, Bella, uh, Bella, so, defense, decreases enemy defense, that's defense break, where, Basically, if you've got really high defense and no HP, you just throw on defense break or you ignore defense with like a Lucian or a Cali or something like that, and they're dead, you know? They're, they're not going to, you know, have any cushion to fall on, you know, in that HP. That's why HP is so much better, um, for now, at least. It uh, depends on if they add runes or something or some type of skill that increases damage based on max HP, uh, like some kind of debuff similar to defense break. Um... I know they have, like, actual attack skills that scale off of max HP, but, um, you know, it still doesn't hit as hard as if, like, you defense break a, a defense monster, like Copper or something like that. You know, I bring an Arnold against a Copper who has a lot of defense, and I just, I one-shot those with my Arnold. You know, that's why you got to really not, you know, you got to steer clear of using any defensive-based monsters with a bunch of defense on Arena. So you definitely want to build um, HP if you're going to be using Monarina. So if you look at Bella, I run HP um, on 4 and 6 and then speed because I want my Bella to go, you know, as much as possible. So we'll look at Bella. She's got 160 speed, which is okay, you know, especially without Swift runes. Um, I don't really have that many speed substats. I've got, like, very little, like, here and there. So... Definitely, you know, if it's a defensive-based monster, if you're using it in Arena, just ignore that defense part and just throw on a bunch of HP runes. Now, if you're using it in, let's say, Trial of Ascension or something like that, or even in, like, Giants or Dragons, I'll show you one right here, Shannon. This is a support-based monster. You know, definitely using defense. I'll show you right here. Where's the defense? Actually, we're... Uh... Okay, so, like, um, like... Bernard, using defense is a little bit more cushion. Uh, it decreases damage. Uh, so my Bernard has like zero HP. It has, what, 11,000, which is nothing. But it has almost 900, all right? So, you know, with a high defense like that, it actually outlasts my Shannon, who only has like 620 uh, defense, but like 12... 12,300, just a little bit more HP, but that much, that much more defense definitely makes a difference. So, you know, if you're using in Giants and stuff like that, if it has an, a high base uh, defense, like Bernard has definitely a little bit higher defense than Shannon because it's a three star, um, it's okay to throw on defense runes. Defense runes aren't really ideal uh, just because they get really outclassed by defense break. And there's really nothing like that uh, that does that for HP. So there's really no skills yet that, you know, increase damage proportional to the uh, amount of HP that the person has. But if we look at Varad right now, 
I got speed HP HP. Um, I'll probably end up running him. I'll probably throw this rune on him right here that has defense so that I can make him as tanky as possible with 100% accuracy. Uh, just like, I know I, I like the uh, speed, but I definitely need this uh, speed rune for someone else. And I definitely need him at 100% accuracy. But if you look at his high base defense, that's not bad at all. Especially because it has some uh, substats that can boost his HP even more. So not only will he have you know, a decent amount, like around probably getting close to 30k HP, he will have a lot more defense. So he'll probably have around 13, 1400 defense uh, when I get done maxing out that rune. Uh, all right, so what else? Endurance uh, increases resistance. You know, that's, that's definitely what you want to use if you're going to be building monsters that, you know, tank because you don't want to get a bunch of uh, debuffs, uh, especially in arena. So if we look... Uh, now, of course, I would definitely say for Arnold, you would want to throw energy runes on him instead because his uh, his last skill scales off of his max HP, and you know the more HP the better. But uh, right now, I just those were the best HP percent runes I had uh, to throw on him. You know, I definitely didn't want to throw like some of these five star runes or whatever. Like I had some five star HP percent. I definitely would rather throw these type. So, you know, and also a huge part is like based on what you have. So, now this is where we get into the complicated part because this is where you really got to decide what you want to run. So if we like, so blade increases crit rate. All right, so crit rate basically is a, a percentage chance to do extra damage, bonus damage. So crit rate is the percentage chance that you will activate this bonus damage. Now critical damage is the bonus that you get put onto it. So if we look, we'll look at someone that actually has um, a decent amount. So if we look at this, 81% crit rate, all right? Actually, I'll show you Vertihill because it's more reliable to show you this. So 100% crit rate. Every time he attacks non-water monsters, because there's a 15, minus 15%, on crit rate against water monsters. Any other monster besides water will always be a, crit, uh, a critical hit. Now this is, imagine they don't have any buffs because a Casus uh, crit rate deba or crit rate buff is a whole other story. So, you know, just straight up monsters, no buffs, no debuffs, anything like that stuff. 100% crit rate chance. Every single hit will be a critical hit, all right? So that means every one of his t attacks gets a 72% critical boost, all right, a, da a damage boost. So 72% of his attack power is going to be added on to the, the damage. So, like, it's going to be more powerful than his little uh, basic damage that he does. So there's a, there's a whole, like, system on how they calculate damage based on the attack and then the scaling of the actual attacks. Because believe it or not, the attacks don't all do the same amount of damage. You know, if you have, like, um, if you have... Uh, what should we call it? Like, say you threw on the Wind Phoenix uh, versus, like, some other monster, and they have, like, the same attack power. I'm pretty sure the Wind Phoenix would still hit harder just because of, like, the scaling between the attacks. Um, I could be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure different attacks boost or, like, scale in different ways. Um, so it's a 70... So the critical damage is a 72% boost to the uh, actual damage that gets put onto the enemy. So now if we look at, like, let's say Lucian, who I definitely need a six-star, imagine if we threw, like, a ton of, um, like, a decent amount of crit rate, all right? Now, his third skill ignores defense, all right? This is what I was talking about. That means if he, with a, with a high attack power, and you see I'm, I'm running Rage Blade, that means he gets a boost in critical damage and a boost in critical rate. All right, so every hit is going to be around, like, say I boost his critical rate to 100% with some other monster that has a, a buff. Um, that basically means every hit is going to have a lot more damage boost, like a bonus, onto his initial attack power, which also ignores defense. That's why Lucian is such a respected monster. Now, you could also run in Fatal Blade and just get as high of attack power as possible. So regardless of whether he uh, gets gets a critical hit or not, 
um, then he will still hit like that same amount, and then the critical hits are just a bonus. Whereas a Rage Blade Lucian depends on their critical hits to actually do damage. I'm more of a fan of the Rage Blade setups, um, but they are, I don't know if they already did it. No, they haven't. They're changing the Fatal Runes to be, I think, 35% instead of 30%. Which is not as much of a boost, but it definitely helps. It, like, so right here, he, he would get 30 more attack power if I put Fatal on him. Uh, just because, um, I won't show you the math behind it, but it's basically 5% of the 662. So he'd probably get probably around 30 to 35. Alright, so, so you see, he is a critical, uh, critical rate and critical damage based monster. So that's why I'm throwing... Critical damage, and then I want to get a bunch of crit rate subs uh, and critical damage substats. I can't really get any good critical damage substats, but um, you'll see that I'm trying to get this critical rate as much as as high as possible, so that he hits that as often as possible, and then that the critical damage is uh, as high as possible. So I need to put on that slot two rage rune right here. So you see, it's a four set, and I don't have that uh, fourth rune in there so i don't get that boost that's why his critical damage is so low so once i put that slot two rune in there so like say i threw some slot two which i don't have then he would get 40 percent boosted to that okay so now that we have rage blade pretty much covered um the typical setup is this trio uh, you've got blade rage and fatal so basically rage blade i would say has more damage potential um, if you can get a really high critical hit, but, uh, Fatal Blade, you can't go wrong with Fatal Blade either. Um, definitely some of the monsters that I throw Fatal Blade on were like Rauk, or some other ones. I've seen Fatal Blade on Lucian, and yeah, so, then we've got Vampire Runes. Now, Vampire Runes basically, and that's a really nice rune I've got there too. Uh, vampire runes basically, uh, how should I put it? They absorb damage um, as HP. So it's 35% of the damage that you do. So say you do 1,000 damage, 350 of that is going to be absorbed as your HP. Now, it's, it's not very helpful on a weak monster, okay? So, monsters that would use this would be like Sigmarus, um, Ramagos, Copper, you know, monsters that you want to have them survive, um, pretty tanky, and you want them to be able to, like, last longer. So, Sigmarus can run Vampire Runes, um, if you really want, uh, if you really want a, a Sigmarus to last longer. Um, I'm not really a fan of va or vampire runes on them. Uh, get out of here. But I would definitely say the two biggest ones, like the easiest choices for vampire runes, are Ramagos and Copper. Um, and you could even throw it on like you know Arnold, but honestly, I think Violent is better with Arnold. So I'll explain that why. Now, if you look, Ramagos does. Uh, damage proportional to his lost max HP. So say he has like 30,000 or 40,000 damage, and he loses like 20 or 30,000, he's going to do that amount as damage, and then he gets a turn right after that. So like say he does that 20,000 damage right there. So that's what? That's about 7,000 heal. So let, uh, for the 20,000 damage. So say he does 20,000 damage. That's 7,000 damage he, or 7,000 HP healed. So now he's only lost 13,000, and then he could heal 30% of his total HP, which is whatever he, uh, whatever you put on him uh, with his crouch skill. So that's one example. Copper with his insanely low HP, because you've got to throw on a bunch of defense on him for his third skill to even be good. Um, you know, it's not going to be hard. For, say he crits for 20 to 30,000 damage, it's going to fully heal him pretty much. So, uh, assuming that he doesn't have a heal block, but, so those are just a couple examples, um, you know, you really could mess around with it, and that's, like, really, the whole thing with runes is just messing around and figuring out what works for you. Uh, revenge, 
Uh, it's a percentage uh, chance to counterattack. So say you're in arena and you attack one of their monsters. If they have revenge runes, they have a 15% chance to counterattack. So that is pretty nice. I would definitely say this rune is pretty limited to who you use it on because that first skill is what you want. Okay, so, so let's look. I'll show you a few examples. Actually, the biggest example is Darien. All right. Uh, now, I have Endurance on him because I don't have any good Revenge runes yet, but um, we look at him. He's got his first skill. It, def it, it defense breaks, all right? So if we look, defense break with a 100% chance when he's fully maxed out, okay? That's really good. Now, imagine you're going against him in Arena, and you hit him, counterattacks, defense breaks your monster. Now it's their turn, and they all target that monster. Now you've got to really be careful with revenge runes because revenge, say he counterattacks like a bunch of monsters, then you're no longer single targeting the monster. The, the thing with the defense break that's really helpful is not only does it like weaken them and that you can just pound on them and do a lot more damage, but you know it. The AI for your arena defense targets the monster with the uh, with the defense break. So say you've got um, say you've got Beretta and Konamaya in there, all right, and you've got you know some neutral or uh, we'll say a monster that's so we so say we've got Konamaya and Beretta, all right, and you've got my Monkey King over here who loves to attack uh, uh, loved loves to attack fire based monsters. His AI will make him attack Beretta, all right, all the time. But if you defense break Konamaya, he will ignore Beretta and hit Konamaya. So that's the lovely thing about um, defense break. It basically just has every monster just focus in on that one monster that has defense break on it. All right, so that, that can be pretty harmful in arena when you just want to wipe out their team when you're on arena defense. So that's something to keep in mind for arena defense. Um, revenge is also pretty useful for arena offense. If you know your Darian, you bring a Darian and he gets attacked. Um, revenge is, uh, gets a defense break put on. You don't need to waste a turn. Um, but I would definitely say this is more for defense, uh, defensive uh, runs. So that's revenge runes. Nemesis uh, for every seven percent of your HP you lose. It increases your attack age by 4%. That's pretty straightforward. So say, you know, you've got monsters that you... I would say, you know, these kinds of monsters, it's really hard to say. I've never used Nemesis on anyone. It's a two set, though, so it could be useful. Now, I would say these are for monsters more like healing type or buff type. I would definitely not say this is for attack-based monsters. So say you've got, like, Vertihill... Or like a Chisun, you know, I could see Chisun being really annoying with this, um, especially because she ignores um, she ignores heal blocks with her third skill. So every time you like weaken the uh, HP of the monster, their attack age will increase. Uh, so say you threw that, we'll just say you threw that on Chisun, and you're targeting Chisun, trying to get rid of Chisun. Now Chisun, every time you take down HP. Her attack age will increase, and eventually it'll get uh, forward enough that she goes again, fully heals up. Um, so that's basically like an example. Shield runes, it's going to be increased, I think, from 10% to 15%. Um, don't quote me on that. I don't really remember fully, but it is going to be buffed. It's basically a shield like a casus uh, where it scales off of the HP of the person it is on, and it's for the entire enemy team. So I've never used um, these runes either. I don't really see that they're really helpful. Like, let's say you threw it on Arnold. That's 10% of, what, 40k that I have on him. That's a 4,000 damage shield. It's nothing. It really, really is nothing. So, so those are all the rune types. Um, now, there are some exceptions when you look at monsters. So if you look at like Malaka, she, he's an attack monster, but some like skills that you need to be careful about, like bombs, bombs scale off of the uh, damage, or I mean the attack power. So if you look at his attack, you don't really need any crit rate or crit damage. You don't need any of that. 
You just want as much attack as possible, because the more attack he has, the more damage his bombs will do. And, of course, you need accuracy to make sure that his bombs land, so I definitely need to get more accuracy on him. Uh, but, of course, he's got his leader skill, so... Um, so that's basically the rundown, uh, you know, a lot of these, like, little, like, up in the, up in the top right of, uh, or to the right of their level, you don't really need to depend on that to determine your runes, that just basically gives you, um, a heads up of where their focus is going to be on, alright, so, like, Bernard is a support monster, so he's going to have not that much attack, you know? Uh, so, like, you definitely got to be careful about those kinds of things, and look at their skill sets. Everything that they do, um, all of the runes that you put on them are dependent on their skill sets. Uh, I can't stress that enough, you know. Shannon, I thought, was one of the worst monsters in the game because it was a two-star, but it turns out Shannon's actually pretty useful. More useful than a lot of three-star monsters, and even some four-star monsters, just because of the, kill, uh, the skills. So basically, this game is, like, completely reliant on the skills and the runes, you know? So, I would say runes probably play, all, like, most of the part, because even with good skills, without runes, it's complete crap. But with even good runes, crappy skills won't get you anywhere against uh, monsters that have good skills. So, you definitely want to take, uh, take an eye at those skills and determine what you want to do. Um, just a quick idea, the basic setups is support-based monsters, um, so like Bella, uh, you definitely want to look at what you want them to do, you know, you look at their skills, so this is an example, decreases defense, cleanses, and heals, so I definitely want Bella to go a lot, alright, because I, all those skills are useful, super useful, so I put speed on slot 2, and I don't want her to be squishy, so I made sure that she had HP, I want her defense break and her cleanse to land, so I put focus runes on her with accuracy substats so I could get her accuracy at least above 70%. And then I put on as much HP because I use her in arena. Um, so that's just one example right there. You know, you could really use this uh, setup for a lot of monsters. Or like, I mean, the way, the process that you go through. You could really use it for a lot of monsters. And a lot of the skills that you do, you know, they're really dependent on runes that you throw on, so like this double AoE that I use for TOA, boom, to spare runes, because uh, there's a 25% chance that I can stun all of the uh, enemies that it attacks. So 25% on each different monster. So you're bound to get at least one. So, so basically that's what all of the um, all of the runes do, and the places that you would use them depend on the skills. And, you know, definitely look at what kinds of monsters they are and what kinds of skills they are. So, let's say we look at, you know, Rauk, who, you know, does attack and has this pretty good passive. You definitely want, you know, it's attack monster. You definitely want to throw on some kind of attack setup. I would definitely say um, Fatal Blade would be better than Rage Blade just because it's not an AoE-based skill. And because you don't want to focus too much on Rauk and Rage Blade can be pretty hard to get because it's really dependent on substats. Uh, but also one thing to be careful about is Chloe. There's, this is one example. Some of these monsters you would have never guessed. All right, so Chloe is a support-based monster, but you really want Chloe to be as fast as possible. And the reason is you want her to throw her shield on, and it's basically a counter to speed teams so they don't blow you out of the water. Um, with like Lucian and Wind Phoenixes and stuff like that. So you would throw the shield on your uh, allies uh, against uh, Freeze and stuff like that too. It helps with the immunity. And that way Chloe just goes a bunch and keeps throwing her shield off. My Chloe is super squishy with only like 17.5k HP. So I need to get better runes. But this is just an example, you know. So, got so many comments. Um... So yeah, I would definitely say use your best judgment. Um, generally, the consensus for it, uh, and you definitely, uh, hold off on that for a sec, you definitely want to, I would say, get help from higher uh, up players for these um, a lot. But also, once you get to like, like mid-level, mid-game uh, stage, you want to start testing stuff for your own. Don't listen to much, um, what other people say, because... You know, a lot of the rune setups depend on how you like to play with your monsters. 
I know that sounded really dirty, but um, what you, you guys know what I mean by that. You, it really depends on your kind of play style. So, you know, use your best judgment. And generally the best consen uh, consens uh, ugh, consensus for this is if you want a tanky monster uh, and they depend on HP, definitely throw on energy runes on there. If you need, uh, if like any of the skills depend on like some kind of debuffs or like landing bombs or stuff like that, you definitely want to throw focus runes on them. Um, if they have good AOE skills, like uh, Julian has, you know, stun on every single one of his skills, and I really like that, I throw in despair runes, okay? So, or if they have like double AOE, uh, you could throw in despair runes. Um, but definitely make sure that at least one of the skills has, uh, at least one of the skills has a stun chance, otherwise it's kind of a waste because the despair runes don't stun as often. Uh, it's kind of like a bonus stun if you plan on using that monster for stuff. Swift runes, definitely use it if you want your monster to go first in battle and, uh, of course, go often. Uh, so definitely someone like Ifrit would be fine. I think Violent might be better for him, but I don't really have any good Violent runes for him. Um, but Swift is mainly for monsters that you want to go first. So like Chloe, um, Bernard, you want to go first. Uh, what are some other ones? Megan, I don't have Megan in this here like right now, but Megan is also another one that you want to go first. Um, and Violet. Now Violet, I would say is probably one of the most used runes. It's generally used when you want a certain skill to be used as often as possible because chances are your monster is going to get their skill activated and they go again, which decreases cooldown time. So like, you know, Arnold, you want his skill to be used as much as possible, uh, his third skill. Um, Veramos, you want his passive to get activated as much as possible, so throw in Violent on him. Bella, you want defense break as much as possible, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, Will runes, like I said, mo mainly when you want your immunity-based monster or like your invincibility-based monster to go first, and you don't want them to get stunned in case they get outspeeded uh, or outsped. Sorry, bad English. Um, Guard runes, I would say there's a very limited amount of play uh, players to use it on. It's definitely not for arena, unless you use it on arena offense with the copper, where it's like scaled on the uh, defense uh, for the damage. Um, mainly for dungeons and stuff like that to decrease damage. Uh, Archangels use them, but I would not suggest defense at all. Uh, it's definitely one of the more early game setups. So uh, Endurance runes, when you want your monster to at least be at a really high resistance so they don't get stunned often. Uh, some examples of these are like Ariel, the Water Archangel, you know, for soloing uh, different floors. You don't want them to be stunned. You want them to get their turn. Another example of this is like Lumeratia. You, you want 50% resistance plus the leader skill. That's 100% resistance. Chances are that she's not going to get um, stunned or get continuous damage effects. Stuff like that. Now, this is the trio of damage I like to call uh, Blade, Rage, and Fatal. So it's either Rage Blade or Fatal Blade. Uh, and those are the two damage setups. Rage Blade is a lot more substat dependent, and I feel like it has better damage potential. And then Fatal Blade is uh, more towards like early game as well, but also in case um, there's some like pretty hard-hitting skills. So I would say like... Like the Wind Phoenix might even use Fatal Blade, um, just because it scales so nicely with the attack power. Uh, but with the buff that is coming up, where it's going to be 35 percent or 40, I think it's 35 percent. Um, the, the the damage potential between Rage Blade and Fatal Blade is going to be about the same, but definitely there's more like wiggle room for Rage Blade because you can always boost your uh, percentage on critical damage but you can't really boost your Fatal as much um, just because Rage Blade has your critical rate, your critical damage, and your attack power to keep in mind. So you can boost one of those up and increase the damage that way, whereas Fatal Blade only depends uh, really mostly on your attack power and then your critical rate, which is going to be pretty low, and your critical damage is going to be almost non-existent. So it's mainly on your attack power, and so that's why it's really harder to increase your uh, damage on Fatal Blade, uh, like your cap on it. Uh, Vampire, pretty limited, but it is for monsters that you want to outlive, I would say, um, that do decent damage. Revenge runes, mainly, um, I would say mainly for arena defense. 
monsters so like Darien or Bella or some you know some of them of that sort where they can uh, counterattack and use their first skill to uh, do something. So even like the Monkey Kings where they stun on their first skill can be pretty pretty annoying, you know, with uh, revenge rooms. Nemesis I've never really used, but I would definitely say. This would be more uh, geared towards buff, like, support monsters. Um, just because it's really pointless on an attack monster. It takes up space, takes up, um, you know, potential bonus skills. Um, so I definitely say it is more for support-based monsters that you want to use their skill before they get killed. So someone like Chasun could use it potentially. Um, I've seen some people throw it on the light Minotaurus or the dark Minotaurus. I don't know how good that is. I've never used them. I don't think they're that good, but, and then shield runes, I honestly, I don't think it's good at all, it doesn't really, I don't, you know, I don't even know if it stacks, so say you have one monster with uh, a, a set of shield runes and then another one, I don't know if those stack, if they do, then it could potentially be pretty annoying, but other than that, it's for two turns, you know, just outlive it, it's not going to do anything, it's only at the beginning, uh, too, so, I would definitely say this is more towards uh, PvE, if that. Even then, not really. You know, it, your your team would really have to be slower than the enemy team uh, to for this to be useful. So, so that's basically it. Those are the general monsters that you use. Yeah, you know, I can't really go through every single monster and tell you guys the rune setups because it can change depending on the players. You know, a lot, I know a lot of people like to run Swift, uh, Swift blade on him and I, I plan on running it but even this setup uh it hits decently uh, of course there's that ongoing debate about fatal blade and rage blade for lucian and stuff like that so it's definitely on preference and you know you gotta use your best judgment and just yo like five more minutes bro you good And yeah, you just got to use your best judgment. So, so if you guys have any questions, um, you know, feel free to leave a, a comment. And um, you know, this game is pretty much dependent on the uh, runes that you run. So, definitely ask, you know, better players than you for different advice that you could use. Just because. You know, you, you never get better if you just, um, if you don't at least take some advice from other people. Because different people have uh, different setups that might even be potentially better than your own. So definitely ask. And if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Uh, if you guys found this helpful, this is mostly for lower level players. Um, definitely just uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and if you found it helpful. And I'll th start throwing out some more advice videos for higher up players like mid-level uh, Conquer 1, Conquer 2 players. Um, so yeah, so if you guys have any questions, just leave it down there in the comment section and I will definitely respond to them as much as I can. And on that note, I will see you guys later. And if you guys won the giveaway, make sure you message me on YouTube using the account that you commented on the video with and then I will get the uh, codes out to you. And again, the winners were Joker B and T. H-H-G-G-B. So uh, thank you guys, and I will see you later.